it's hard to make out against the, the background, but those five terms starting with hard soft Brexit uh, and below, uh, just to, to kind of set some of the basic terms that uh, you probably heard around this issue. So a hard Brexit means a really rough, extreme, radical break from the United Kingdom away from the EU. And a soft Brexit means, yeah, we're going to leave the EU, but we'll still have close commercial ties, uh, close uh, legal and regulatory, regulatory relationships with the EU. Uh, so those are kind of terms that you hear a lot. Uh, even people who agree that they want Brexit to happen, and not everybody in the UK wants it to happen, of course, but even among those who agree on Brexit, there are hard and soft versions. The phrase no deal would be a form of hard Brexit. The deal in question refers to the fact that if and when the UK left the European Union, new relationships would have to be negotiated about trade, uh, regulations, uh, legal and police cooperation, and things like that. So the, the whole concept that the UK and the EU have been trying to work out a quote unquote deal that's a, you know, a comprehensive legal agreement that will govern the relationship once the United Kingdom is out. No deal means if nothing is agreed and the deadline comes, which is supposed to be this Friday, but it's been pushed back a couple weeks, so now it's two weeks from Friday. Um, no deal would mean suddenly the UK is out and there are not negotiated terms for a lot of the business trade and intergovernmental contacts that would normally go on. So most of the experts characterize the no-deal scenario as harsh, disruptive, potentially having severe economic impacts when British and European companies aren't able to do the things that they're accustomed to doing and dealing with one another. Now the idea of a customs union is one of the issues that people are arguing about for this post-Brexit relationship. And what a customs union means, and this can give you a sense of why some people are really against it, is in a customs union, every member of the union negotiates trade relationships with the rest of the world as a bloc. So the European customs union means that one country in the European Customs Union has the same tariff rates with other countries uh, or outside of Europe that another country in the Customs Union has. Some of the uh, advocates of Brexit really do not want a Customs Union because they say that Britain can get better trade deals on its own, negotiating direct with China or the United States or various other countries, not having to negotiate as a bloc with the rest of Europe. Um, on the other side of the argument, a customs union means, you hear the phrase frictionless trade, which is probably a slight exaggeration, but in a customs union, because you have the same tariff policies, you can let things go cross borders really easily. Um, and that brings us to the Irish backstop, which is probably the strangest phrase, the most confusing that you might have heard. Because, I should have brought a map of the island of Ireland, but the northern part of Ireland belongs to the United Kingdom, and the southern part is an independent country called the Republic of Ireland. There is a political border on the island of Ireland. Now, if the UK were not in a customs union with the EU, Ireland is one of the EU countries. So if the UK left the EU, then EU trade and regulatory rules would apply in the southern part of Ireland, but UK's rules would apply in the northern part of Ireland. And if you're not in a customs union, the rules are bound to be different, meaning you have to check everyone going across to make sure that, just to take a 
a semi-made up example, if the, EU, if the EU does not want beef that's been treated with hormone, from cows treated with hormones from the United States, if they say that's not allowed in the EU, but the UK has a different trade arrangement that says, oh yeah, we take American beef even if it is from cows treated with hormones. In Ireland, they're going to make, want to make sure that none of the prohibited beef gets across from Northern Ireland into Ireland. Because there are different standards, you've got to have checks on the border. The reason this is a problem in Ireland is because, um, for reasons that I won't pontificate on, and that I don't fully understand uh, the reasons behind them, but a lot of people in Ireland associate the hard border with um, the, the violence in the north of Ireland in previous decades. And they think that the, the frictionless trade across the northern and southern border in Ireland is a key component of civil peace on the island. Um, it tamps down tensions between the Protestants and the Catholics in um, Northern Ireland, possibly because everyone's too busy trying to make money and you know, trading between North and South. And actually almost everyone agrees that a hard border in Northern Ireland would not be a good idea. The problem is, if the UK is not in a customs union with the rest of the EU, some kind of border checks seem to be necessary. Absent some hypothetical technological fixes that, you know, we can always put our faith in technology, but no one actually knows what that fix would be yet. And so this has led to the issue of the Irish backstop, where the EU has said, there's no way that we're going to um, just allow goods to flow in from the UK into Ireland. Once it's to Ireland, it can go anywhere else in the EU without checks. There's no way the EU is going to allow stuff into Ireland from the UK without checks. And nobody wants a hard border with lots of checks. Uh, so the EU has said, um, if you if you don't, as long as the UK doesn't negotiate some terms with us on trade, where we can come up with a uh, solution to not have a hard border, the UK will remain in the customs union. So the backstop is the customs union, even after the UK leaves, the customs union must remain the default. The UK is part of it until we can actually work out a trade deal between the UK and the EU. And this brings up another issue. Welcome. Come on in. There we go. This brings up another issue, which is that Disregard the, texture, let's get the full trade deal is yet to be negotiated. That, that was always going to happen after the official Brexit date. But the Irish backstop is something that uh, many people in the UK and Northern Ireland really don't like because they feel that the EU could use it legally to say the UK is never getting out of the customs union. We're just going to be able to keep the UK in the customs union in perpetuity. And for many people who are in favor of Brexit, that defeats one of the main purposes of Brexit, which was to allow the UK to negotiate its own trade arrangements with the rest of the world. So the Irish backstop is there to try to avoid a hard border, to try to keep the peace situation between Catholics and Protestants in Ireland. And that's desirable. For people in favor of Brexit, it's also desirable to leave the customs union. So that's kind of the, uh, what's the phrase, uh, you know, squaring the circle, um, taking two things that are apparently mutually contradictory and, and resolving them. That's, where the, that's why the Irish backstop has become probably the leading cause of delay and dysfunction in this process because the EU and the UK have not figured out how do we get a trade relationship where the UK doesn't have to be in the customs union, but we don't have to have border checks between Northern and Southern Ireland. By the way, since I have an Irish surname, I'm, I'm going to just pull, pull this much of ethnic privilege to add, there's a very elegant solution to this entire problem 
which is no border, no internal borders on the island of Ireland. But of course, that would mean the UK had, would give up Northern Ireland to the Republic of Ireland. And many in the UK don't want that. Many in Northern Ireland don't want that. The Protestants want to stay part of the UK. So that's why this dredges up you know, the ancient rivalry between the Protestants and Catholics um, in Ireland and why it's such a thorny issue. Last but not least, and I'm going to do this in 30 seconds or less, the phrase indicative votes, which has only become a thing in the last few days, uh, they've reached an impasse in the British Parliament where the government negotiated a withdrawal agreement with the EU, but many people don't like the withdrawal agreement, so a majority in the British Parliament has voted twice and has still not passed what was negotiated with the EU. And so now they're doing indicative votes, which are kind of non-binding, speculative resolutions, just to try to find out what would a majority of parliament support. Because they've had so many votes where the majority said no, the indicative votes is a, is a concept of, let's put out half a dozen different proposals for how to resolve Brexit and what, and what the future relationship should be. And let's see if any one of them has majority support. Because if nothing passes, then it's no deal. British Parliament doesn't say yes to anything, then the answer is no, and that's the hard Brexit that some people are worried about. So I hope that clears up some of the confusing terminology. Before I turn it over to you, Steve, could I just ask, are there any questions or clarifications about Brexit terminology? It's not a bad thing if you have questions. It's kind of what we're here for. <laughs> this might be kind of tangential, but um, since Ireland is certainly like people are moving around on the island, is still very separated geographically, and all the Protestants are in the north, and all the Catholics are in the south. 